I was visiting it on a regular basis every fortnight for some two or three years and treating the children there for recurrent otitis media, suppurative otitis media, perforations of the eardrums, all sorts of things. I found that the children were coming to school um, with sores on their arms and we also had a problem with their hearing in the classroom. So we then decided we, we needed to do something else. We asked the um, AMS, uh, Aboriginal Medical Service, to help us out and work out ways that we can fix those problems up. The traditional treatments with antibiotics was totally ineffective. The hearing rates were only 40% of the children had normal hearing, 60% um, had moderate to severe hearing loss as a result of otitis media. Right side first, see how we go here. Just got to pull that back a bit. And when we looked at the diet of the children who were attending the school, there was about 20 children there, all Aboriginal children, the, their diet was fairly poor. So we decided to do some studies. We did do some nutritional studies. We did blood tests. We, and we took blood tests on all the children and we found that they were, every child was deficient in vitamin C and about 75% were deficient in iron as well. I originally got the job at the Aboriginal Medical Service as a result of Dr Jones' fantastic work out here with the kids at this school. Originally, um, many of the children had ear infections, chronic otitis media and skin infections and he found that by improving the nutrition with fruit um, boxes being delivered to the school each week that um, the children's health improved dramatically. The clinical presentation for otitis media can be quite varied. Um, one episode of acute middle ear infection otitis media it could happen to anyone and doesn't mean that your health your nutrition is bad or, or you know that you are any different necessarily to any other child. I think it's more about the clinical course over a period of time so are they presenting frequently with frequent infections and in terms of when you know what's the appropriate treatment there is no you know one you have to have this at this time. Have been screened for hearing here at the AMS yeah. before? Okay. Then we okay. decided to bring an intervention in. We decided to give vitamin supplements to begin with. Nearly every day we had to do it at lunch time and uh, the kids, we had to fight with them to get them to take it. And we just had enough of this fight and so when Doc came the next time we just said no, we're not going to do that no more, let's think of another way. So we sat down and thought okay let's try the fruit. Banana <laughs> and watermelon and orange. Don't you like watermelon? I did. Said it. And we just basically started feeding the children fresh fruit at school each day. And we've been doing that for the last seven years at this school. And within about six months, we noticed a huge improvement in these children's hearing. The ears were drying up. They were getting less skin infections than they had before. The script book went out the door. The ears were running like something, like a tap. That all started to clear up. Their skin started to look really, really nice. And we thought, oh, we're doing something good here. As I said, um, Dr Jones was bringing fruit out, but they weren't really eating a lot of vegetables. One of my first roles when I first started the job was to come out to Bayougal School each week and do cooking with the children. So we'd cook stir fries, pizzas with lots of veggies and various different recipes that the children enjoyed. Learning how to make a whole heap of different things, aren't you guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. What else have you made this year? Everything I made. Pizza? Mm -hmm. Pasta. 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 I also am doing a PhD looking at specifically at the fruit and vegetable program and an evaluation of that and its impact on, on kids' health. Just tip your head down a little bit and that's the way. Okay. The incidence of, of otitis media was quite high, particularly in places like Bayougal and, and Malabugulma, um, around perhaps 30%. In town, and, and we've been now working in Grafton as well as McLean and Yamba, um, the incidence is quite a bit lower. 
um, you know, probably of the order of 5 to 10 percent. So uh, there certainly seem to be some differences in the different communities. The more remote communities seem to be more, you know, have more health problems and, and perhaps you know, be more disadvantaged. They certainly have less access to shops and, uh, and things. Okay. Yeah, big of it, move it all around, mix it. The kids are interested in getting in and planting some veggies. If we can grow our own here and use that, but it's, uh, it's also a good skill that the kids can learn. So the teacher has no longer needed to use a surround sound system which was previously in place because the children couldn't hear him speaking. We've also noticed improvements on their hearing tests. The Royal Deaf and Blind Society come out and screen the children and also one of our health workers is trained in hearing and all the results since the nutrition program has been in place have been dramatically better than they were previously. That's right on. So he's done well. As a result of this program being so successful in this small community, we've, we then decided to extend it to other communities that we service, to Grafton, McLean and Yamba. And we employed two dietitians to implement it. And we need some salad and some eggs and something in the middle here. Soup? All of the children, there wasn't just one or two, all of the children showed improvement in their their skin infections and their hearing. What we've been able to demonstrate it, in this little area has probably been the most dramatic improvement. I've been a doctor for 30 years. I've never, it's the most dramatic thing that I've seen in my medical career in terms of a simple intervention providing such a great health outcome. energy so we can score goals.